Metamorph League was released alongside Conquerors of the Atlas expansion, and as such it's one of many leagues that would not be expected to introduce expansive lore itself. Conquerors of the Atlas was really an extreme amount of lore. But Metamorph has quite a lot of lore itself. It introduced Tane, his research, and his laboratory. While the mechanics of Metamorph League are not revolutionary, it started a deep story that still, to this day, seems unfinished. It feels like something more should have happened when we create an advanced Metamorph monster in Tane's laboratory, as a gauge appears to the right when adding these unique samples. But nothing happens. What was supposed to happen upon assembly of this purified monster metamorph? Does what Tane is researching have implications for the rest of the world? Let's start with who Tane is. To get it out of the way, it's never explained why Tane is in deep sea diving gear. He has a tube of green liquid on his back, and his scuba helmet is glowing green, so we can assume he is consuming or inhaling this green substance. He has vials of it all along his belt and multiple holsters. The scuba gear is either necessary to continuously expose him to this liquid, to hide his features, or a combination of both. Although it's not actually discussed by Tane or anyone else in the game, I'll talk more about my thoughts on this liquid and Tane's eccentric gear when we discuss his research and the metamorphs themselves. We do know about Tane's past, and what has led him to meet us. Tane was once a Karui slave living in Oriath, but he is now a freed man, and he plans to stay that way. He does not remember his Karui heritage, and was likely a slave on Oriath since birth, or at least childhood. He was the slave of an Oriathan man named Lucan Octavius, who was a wealthy alchemist of high status. He called him his master, as Tane was both his slave and his apprentice for Lucan's alchemical research. They had a tenuous relationship, obviously, with Tane both respecting and fearing Lucan. Lucan's work required handling extremely dangerous, often very hot, materials. Tane would be subjected to handling the more dangerous and volatile elements of Lucan's research. Lucan was studying and perfecting something he called Sinner's Water, and would give this concoction to his own children, and then allow his children to beat Tane for his research. Lucan was not a kind man. He was more dangerous, more explosive, and more unstable than any material Tane had to handle, using his own children and Tane in his experiments. Until one day, Tane had enough or something inside Tane had had enough. As Tane describes it, he was never violent until that day. He could not fathom how one man could take another's life before that moment. But Lucan drew that anger out of him. Whether this was effects from Lucan's alchemical testing, or just pushing Tane over the edge with his abuse, Tane killed Lucan. He doesn't regret that Lucan is dead, only that he killed him. Lucan was an awful, violent man, but now Tane fears he passed that sickness, that anger, onto him. Now Tane continues Lucan's studies with a focus on finding and isolating the darkness that lives in all living things, and now in Tane himself. Tane tasks us with taking samples from enemies we fight on Rayclast and in maps and combining them to create a monster called a metamorph. Then we must kill that metamorph, in the hopes of finding even more refined samples for Tane's study. What Tane is studying is something he calls intrinsic darkness, a property in all living things that hides within us, waiting for a moment of weakness when it can take control. He calls it a cruel and invisible slave driver, and he believes this force this intrinsic darkness, is what took over him when he killed Lucan. The sinner's water that Lucan was giving his children is the basis of Tane's current work on intrinsic darkness, and the foundation of what Tane uses to create these metamorphs, along with their samples. 
we can find a note in Tane's laboratory that suggests that Lucan may have had to force his children to drink the sinner's water he was working on. Or he could have been forcing Tane, it's unclear who the subject is in this letter, but we see a few familiar ingredients here. Virtue gems, of course, but also trorthin powder, thematic sulfite, and voltaxic sulfite. Voltaxic sulfite is the power source Nico seeks for his adventures in the mines for Delph. Thaumetic sulfite is a quest item in Act 3 we give Diala to make explosive infernal talc. It is also used in virtue gem refining, as well as the substance that gives life to the animated gold statues throughout the land. Trarthan powder is used by Sin in Act 9 as a dissolving agent to break open the wound in the beast left by Doriani. So, these ingredients Lucan was working with were truly volatile and heavily thaumaturgical. Another ingredient worthy of note is the Blessed Water of Innocence, likely an equivalent to holy water. The mixing of thaumaturgical powers and the divine is a direct parallel to the corruption that comes from the beast. So the implications of mixing these types of substances is that this is a mixture that causes or replicates corruption. One thing that is missing from Lucan's list of ingredients is the organs that we take from freshly dead enemies to add and create this metamorph. This is obviously an important aspect of creating a metamorph, as the metamorph will take on the properties, both physical and abilities, based on the monsters we choose to use the organs of. The metamorph shifts rapidly between forms, and the only way for us to retrieve a new, more powerful organ to use as a sample is to include a unique monster's organ in the metamorph and to give it powerful enough component organs to reach a certain threshold. The addition of organs is Tane's contribution to Lucan's research, what Lucan spent his life perfecting. Tane describes the process of creating a metamorph as destroying the flesh of the dead and drawing out the ill will that inhabits it and giving that form. By distilling this darkness from bits of flesh, these organs, and manifesting it as a being, he hopes he can eventually do the reverse, separate the darkness from the being and leave the being intact. At this point, Tane is still trying to isolate this darkness that exists in all beings, which he once believed was a symptom of the corruption that pervades Rayclast. This explains why the original ingredients of Lucan's Sinner's Water mirror components, the Divine and the Thaumaturgical, that created the beast's corrupting force. But now, Tane believes that the intrinsic darkness he studies is something more primeval and universal an element of our very beings, and not just part of Rayclass's corruption. He even asks us to help him test his hypothesis that the darkness is not a property of where we live, and to take samples from other places, maps, and find some which possess the darkness. While intrinsic darkness sounds metaphorical or even philosophical, the base desires and instincts that we all fight yet rarely defeat, Based on the very real metamorphs that Tane reanimates, there must be some tangible origin to this darkness that Tane is able to isolate and distill. But if it is not simply the corruption of the beast itself, what is it? Components mirroring corruption bring it to the surface, but do not create it. What is the actual origin, if any, of this intrinsic darkness? As usual, scarabs come to the lore rescue. The metamorph scarabs tell the story of one Saresh, a Faradun member of the Order of the Jinn. Immediately though, the story on these scarabs is different than most. Many scarabs tell the story of great deeds and important research that members of the Order have done. But even on the first rusted scarab, we get hints that Suresh's story is not one of glory or success. When the Order found Suresh, left in the desert as all Faradun are, it says, The Order shall command your penance even now. Remember, all Faradun are the deformed or otherwise cursed children of Marraketh, who are thrown to the desert, 
and gets saved by this roving band of Mariketh rejects called the Feridun. But the term penance is particularly telling. Penance is self-inflicted punishment or atonement for something you've done wrong. One could say, well, the Order was Mariketh. Perhaps the Feridun are seen as vile even by the Order, who are accepting of all. Except another Order member, Sumay, was also rejected by the Mariketh and left in the desert to die. She would be a Feridun if she had not been found by the Order, but she was accepted openly, as the Order saw potential in her and said, we are your Akara now. The need for penance is not because Suresh was Feridun. It is because he was rejected even by the Feridun outcasts. This implies Suresh did something bad, something that would require penance, to be cursed to walk the white sands even by the Feridun who rescued him initially. Suresh was then dubbed the Surgeon of the Dead and explored the vast well of human darkness. This is the intrinsic darkness that Tane is researching, and they have similar methods. Tane takes organs of the recently deceased and combines them to create his metamorphs. Suresh, the Surgeon of the Dead, was probably doing something very similar. But Suresh's story is cut short. There was a man of bone, rotting flesh and weeping black, but his name, his ill-gotten knowledge, and his role in the Order shall be stricken from memory. Suresh was banished from the Order. Suresh gained some knowledge, too horrible and dangerous for even the Order to protect and he transformed into this new appearance with weeping black, which sounds like a metamorph. From start to finish, Suresh was always trouble, steeped in this darkness even before he was found by the Order, but with their help, able to become even more powerful and dangerous. The Winged Scarab reveals that Suresh became the necromancer of weeping black. Apparently, Garukan herself the Mariketh goddess, who was once Sin's wife, killed him, although his mindless legions remained scattered throughout Rayclast. I believe that Suresh, the necromancer of Weeping Black, either created or was the first to tap into this intrinsic darkness that Tane now studies. I lean towards him not being the creator, but the catalyst, if you will, to the darkness. He did start off by exploring the vast well of human darkness, so he either made this metaphorical darkness tangible, this weeping black, or took a darkness that already existed and shaped it to his own will. With the title Necromancer and Surgeon of the Dead, he was likely doing exactly what Tane is doing, taking pieces of beings and creating the dark black metamorphs his legion that remains scattered. The only difference being that Tane creates them to destroy and study them, whereas we don't know what Suresh did with them, but he likely used them for his bidding until Garukan killed him. I believe whatever Suresh discovered to create these monsters to become the necromancer of Weeping Black is what the aqueous umbra is on the ingredients list. Aqueous Umbra roughly translates to watery shadow, and that's also synonymous with weeping black. So Lucan, and now Tane's research, ties all the way back to Suresh, a man who lived and died while the gods were still on Rayclast. Meaning Suresh died before the beast existed and created the corruption and nightmare. Tane is right. This intrinsic darkness is older and more primeval than the corruption of Rayclast. If Lucan was using this sinner's water with the aqueous umbra in it, and forcing Tane and his children to drink it, that could illuminate what Tane really means when he says, Lucan drew out of me an anger I did not know I was capable of experiencing when describing himself killing Lucan. It also might explain why Tane has to live in a scuba suit of green liquid, 
the same color of liquid that Tane uses to preserve the samples of monsters with intrinsic darkness that we use to create metamorphs. I believe Tane has been transformed, to an extent, and has to keep himself constantly contained and preserved to not become a metamorph himself. This would also explain why he is so intent on finding a way to extract this intrinsic darkness and leave the flesh unharmed. He could be trying to revert whatever has been done to him, whatever he has become. It's a more personal journey than just saving the world from intrinsic darkness. In the meantime, he must be preserved. One last piece. Tane tells us that he has an extra sample he has been saving to use in his research. A rare ichor, no other like it in this world. The ichor is the very essence of a human, its soul. While this ichor could be that of Suresh, as I stated before, I believe that Suresh's influence on this research is actually the aqueous umbra, the weeping black, that even Lucan himself used in his alchemy. One thing I didn't mention is that the title of Lucan's note left in the laboratory is Further Improvements to the Preserving Fluid. But I don't think this means that the green liquid that preserves Tane and the organs is this preserving fluid, which is why I didn't mention it until this point. Lucan describes the preserving fluid as an ichor, and that it is time-sensitive and must be immediately imbibed or consumed which makes me think that Lucan describes this substance as preserving fluid because it preserves the intrinsic darkness he was studying, or brings it out to its original state. Either way, Tane has a specific, unique ichor that is a human soul, and I believe that it is the soul of Lucan himself. Tane describes the ichor as being from an individual that was cruel beyond measure, though not incapable of kindness, or so he's heard. This sample, this soul, is the special ingredient in Tane's research, and we see that when we kill metamorphs in his lab, he says that, unfortunately, the pathetic pool of fluid on the ground, all that remains, is the sample I added, and it appears unaffected. Sometimes when you enter Tane's lab, he will mutter to himself, I'll never tire of watching them slaughter you, I hope you can feel every cut. And what's left of your legacy? Nothing but a few stains on the floor. All your work was for nothing and I couldn't be happier about it. If we are slaughtering him and his legacy is a few stains on the floor, and we know his special sample is left on the floor after our encounters, I'm positive that Tane's special sample is, in fact, Lucan himself, his soul. You hear me, old man? I'm never going to let you rest. Never. So, Tane is continuing the legacy of his abusive master and teacher, Lucan Octavius, in the pursuit of refining, isolating, and extracting the intrinsic darkness within all beings to study it and hopefully, eventually, at least he says so, be able to reverse the process to extract the intrinsic darkness in living flesh and leave the being with no intrinsic darkness in it. But that can't possibly be what the ending of Metamorph was leading to. Is there any world in which a league ends with, we did it, we defeated the darkness, Tane is cured and the world is a better place? I don't think. The precipice of this final research was creating a metamorph with such potent samples, darkness extracted from uniquely dark entities, and combining them. What could have happened? Was Tane actually pursuing something dark himself, like Suresh so long ago, to be able to control and create his own metamorphs? To become a weeping necromancer? I don't think that's it either. My theory is that the final metamorph would have been a boss fight, and might have taken on the form of Lucan himself, in addition to whatever Tane and we had added to his experiment. In true PoE fashion, I bet that Tane would believe this was what would bring him the answers, the cures. But it wouldn't. 
you would still not be able to remove intrinsic darkness. We may have given him some kind of closure or put Lucan to rest, but the intrinsic darkness would still be a force in the world, and Tane would still be stuck in his green scuba suit of liquid. If anything, defeating Lucan and not being rewarded for it, not achieving his goal of extracting intrinsic darkness without death, could have pushed Tane even further into his research, driven him into a scientific frenzy, searching for answers and having even more reason to curse Lucan for hurting him one last time. I doubt we will ever find out. Even though Metamorph was a relatively light league mechanics-wise, the lore within it runs deep, with further additions to the mess, chaos, and darkness that is ever-present and all-encompassing on Rayclast. Thank you so much for watching It's Ya Boy Noodle, pumping out past league content as voted on by patrons. Thanks for all the support, as always. Make sure to change out your preserving fluid every day and stay sane, exiles.